January to December, everybody in the house. It's worth celebrating, right? It's worth celebrating. See, 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 we're alive. It's only us that can dance. The dead cannot dance. The dead cannot jump. But we're alive today, yeah? And let's have fun. Let's have a great time. You know, this is Africa. Let's, let's show Major Laser the energy. You know, with Major Laser, we started this, it was all about building bridges to these different places and having these conversations with music all over the world. This show is about the people that we're meeting and telling their story. The music is the ultimate bridge. The music is the ultimate communication of culture. Nothing else is gonna get you and me and her and him together, standing next to each other, more than music. Yeah, how you doing? <laughs> I think if you want to learn about people, if you want to learn about culture, music is the easiest way to learn. Coming from America and just being fascinated by music, my job by default is a DJ. Like I, I love to play music. I love to perform for people and give people music. I never thought it would take me all over the world, but I took advantage of that. Main mission of Major Lazer I always put into one sentence, which is to make the world smaller by making the party bigger. Collaborating with artists from all over the world is what we do. So much diversity and in the culture in Africa. Some of our biggest relationships in music are with artists from Nigeria, Ghana, and you know, the whole West Africa. Yeah, Africa is not one country like you might think it is, it's 54, and every one of them is unique, diverse. I joined Major Lazer between May and June of 2019. It was very exciting, I remember landing, I just remember looking down, I was like, and as soon as we landed, I was like, I'm in Africa right now. We went to Lagos for a concert during our African tour. Lagos is just like New York times 100. It never stops, the lights are never off. It's just on fire. There's so much energy there. It just needs one spark and it just ex explodes. Smooth 98.1, welcome back everyone. What's your Friday looking like? So we are partying. All right, yes. all right. Major Laser is gonna be in Lagos tonight on their Africa tour before they head to Ghana. The moment you begin to have some kind of communication with any of the artists or anybody uh, in the African diaspora, I immediately feel that comfort that this is my aunt, this is my cousin, this is my brother, this is my sister. Afrobeats has influenced the biggest pop stars that we have in America. Beyonce did a whole album Drake has been influenced. He's come out songs, you know, that, that directly connect with the Afrobeat sound. It might have felt like it came out of nowhere, but it's been building for 50 years. Now let's take it back to the legend who started it all, Fela Kuti, the father of Afrobeat. Because for me, when I first heard Afrobeat Nigerian, Afrobeat from the 70s, it was like funk and psychedelic rock mixed together. <laughs> Fela Kuti was an artist and activist. He mixed jazz and soul and funk and rock and roll and African music. The shrine became the catalyst for that movement as a sort of home for all the counterculture. It had crazy music scene, uh, everything from disco to uh, high life. But the highlight of my personal trip, and I believe the band, was to go and hang out with Femi Kuti. Fela had a huge family, and Femi was one of his one of his sons. Femi built the New Africa Shrine to honor his father's legacy. They took us upstairs, sat down, had some palm wine. I definitely felt like kind of like a, you know, a kid. And I was like, man, I don't know much about this, but I wanted to, you know what I mean? I was in that moment, I wanted to hear his story. It's so important that artists do this kind of thing. It's the cultural, musical connection of collaborations, artists working together. 
more things we do like this, I think the dynamics change, and then a new culture starts to emerge, so to say. Femi put something together that was that that coherent and beautiful, and, and but uniquely Nigerian. Big up to everyone who's proud of the Nigerian artists running the world right now. This crew right here is a good crew. I like this crew. Now you have records on the radio that you can recognize. Uh, and you ask, where did this record come from? Oh, that's the Nigerian record. And then you're like, what, Nigeria? I'm making records there? And then you see, oh, there's like an enormous scene there that's taking over the world. Yeah, Mr. Easy's probably one of our favorite artists to work with because we love his work ethic and we have a great friendship. We started off as friends first and we've been able to make music out of that great friendship. My baby, they confuse me, yo, with the bomb, bomb. With Easy, I just thought the sound of like this folk sound with the way he was dressed, his style, his videos and his voice and his clever lyrics and his humor. I was like, this guy could be a really big star around the world. Like the way the music is made, people can understand Nigeria through artists like this. I was doing illegal gold mining and then the government crashed that and then I wanted to legalize. And so I came to Nigeria looking for money and I couldn't find money. Nobody wanted to give me money. And so I started a foam business with my friend, and that was just my focus. What's your name? My name is Mr. Easy, singer, songwriter, cool stuff, all the cool stuff, yeah. <laughs> but music was like the escape for me. I remember on Sundays, I just go to the studio after church and just chill, you know? So, and to be honest, I didn't want anybody to know me because you know, I was trying to build the business, the phone business. So I didn't want like serious corporations thinking I wasn't serious. The reason why I talked to him is like another business he started. So um, a not for profit for kids in Africa that was really cool called Empower. He's like Mr. Nigeria. You know, the first Mr. Easy record I heard was Leg Over. I was obsessed with the record. He fused an old Nigerian guitar with the new Afro pop drums. To be honest, I think the world is kind of late, but it's all good. The world is only like, finally saying, oh, wow, look at what's going on there, because like, it's been happening for over 10 years. Well, Nigeria is like a, it's a cocktail on its own, and you could see that in the music. If you're just talking about myself or Whiskey or Bonaboy or David Doe, you're just talking about pop stars. Like, you haven't even scratched the surface. I'm not saying it to impress you. I'm saying it for my guts. And whatever comes from your guts has to be the purest thing. And so that's just me. I believe music came from Africa. That's what I think. From the place of pain. Beside the Yoruba people, we have songs for war. We have songs for when you give birth. We have songs for when you're getting married. We have songs for burial. We, we make music for everything. In fact, we have music for insulting each other. Or your way, they call it or your way, Yoruba. So if I'm fighting with you, I'll just sing a song. Obo she she, kudeleto. Something like that, just, you know, we make music, we make music for everything. Tandy's probably the most interesting and electrifying person I've actually come across uh, in a long time. I watch her, her Instagram and her YouTube videos and you just want more. You just want to be a part of her world. Her music is amazing. Her voice is amazing. The girl's voice is crazy. Somebody Nigeria, they try to conform a woman into what they think a woman should be. But a woman is a human being. And a woman should be allowed to be who she wants to be. It's like women have to be this way. Uh, you know, I can't wear my hair out like that. I have to wear a wig on. I have to have makeup on. I think my skin is flawless. I don't need no makeup. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I look at the mirror, I love what I see. 
I don't care what you see. I like what I see, and that's all that matters. So. Forget about this. My country. So many beautiful people in my country. So many people suffering for my country. So many people with money, but they don't share. They don't share. Cause if we got cheese, spread the cheese, make we eat in Nasa and I get together. My brother. I think musicians are like some of the most effective ambassadors of the country, showing the positiveness of Nigeria. Like, so this is the new wave. Uh, I think the internet has made everything more visible and made it easier to connect. Now you don't have to go through a thousand people to reach a kid in Lagos, and it's beautiful. You know, you have all these young people in Africa and everybody's on their mobile phone. Everybody has access to the internet. So you have a hundred million kids just going crazy and uh, interested in music, art, culture, and, and that's where the power comes from. Time is now for Africa. And I believe that we're going to take over the world very soon. So the world should pay attention. Time is now. Thank you so much, Lagos. <laughs> So this last trip uh, to Africa was exciting because we were going to be doing our first show in Ghana, which I think was the most exciting thing. Finding out that Ghana was the majority of where I'm from, it, it gave me good insight to where I need to really focus the energy of, of, of this journey and searching the answers of, of my ancestry. Ghana is 45 minutes away uh, by airplane to Lagos. There's always a conversation with Ghana and Nigeria about music. You know, Nigeria is the one who was sort of like the, the Hollywood, and I think Ghana is more like the indie version of it, you know? And it, it's, it's laid back, but the music scene is very big there. I feel like the relationship between Nigeria and Ghana is more of, you know, brotherhood. And in every family, you have brothers. Like, my kid brother is always, like, he's always trying to spar with me. Sometimes he wants to be like me, sometimes, he wants to be his own person. And sometimes we get into fights, but two beautiful cultures. Hey, welcome to Ghana. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for making time, honestly. Yes, I appreciate it. Sarko D is probably the biggest star in Ghana. I don't get to play too many African records in my sets with Major Lazer, besides the ones we produced. So you want to be make sure you play the, the classics, basically. And isn't Sarkozy has a big, big record that was everybody knows in Ghana and everybody knows in, in London and, and in the African diaspora. This is the, literally the biggest rapper to come from Ghana ever. And the kids are playing basketball. <laughs> their boxes are working. Their, their boxing you feel skills. Me? You know, so respecting him. You know, exactly. He's very proud of where he's from. He's very proud of Ghanaian music, and he's he represents it. This area of Accra called Jamestown has the highest concentration of boxing gyms of any place in the world. Sarkozy so wanted to show us one of the gyms there and uh, give us a little insight into what it is to, to live your life and to train as a boxer in Ghana and um, in the music that's connected. And when we got there, of course, everybody knew he was. He's wow, he's in the that's, city that's, now. A, that's a legend. We need to give it up to Ghana, you know, because yeah. Ghana, definitely, when it comes to music in Africa, we stepped it up. You know, the invasion to me started from when we realized that we should do, we should stick together and do it together. Because in the beginning, individually, we were trying to like do it on our own. Right. Like an easy would try, or a Wiz would try, David would try, Shatawale would try, I would try. But it started making sense when we invaded together. And that's when we started doing shows together, selling our arenas together. Yeah. So we have a show tonight. I know you might be busy, but if you want to come by. No, no, I'm going to come through. I, will, I would want to see it. I, I want to give kudos to you. Yeah. And I want to make sure you have a great time while you're in Ghana. So in, you, you reached out, you know, you, you merged just two worlds. Oh, whatever it's it is. It's just Afro B, great music. It's something that is much powerful than us because right now the whole world is listening to it now. Okay. Ready? Yeah, ready. So, um, welcome to Ghana. I hope you're having a wonderful time. My name is Effia. Um, I am a female artist in Ghana. When I first met Effia, her music 
matches her spirit. Amazing spirit, amazing music. Just awesome person. We did a skin tie with Mr. Easy, and that really blew up. I think that was one of the f big Afro B songs that crossed over worldwide. I went to Ghana when I was 15. I feel like Ghana calmed me down. Because before I went to Ghana, I was, I was a naughty boy. And it's been my advantage, even as a human being, having sort of a yin and a yang somewhere in between, and that has affected my music. It's beautiful because what a combination. You can only do better by um, being like with each other. It's much, much better when we do that than trying to do it on your own, you know? I see nothing but unity, and they seem to understand that together they're much stronger, and so they support each other and put forward a lot of great energy between the two countries. There's little, little hubs in this one hub of Accra. If you're an artist, you make different music and it's not mainstream, there's a place that you can still have a show that people will come to, that you will start growing numbers as time goes on, you know? You could do it, like, in a small place like Republic, which is very, very, like, known for discovery of new sounds. Anytime people step into this spot, they just feel free. Yeah. They have the best music, the best DJs. People don't stick to the status quo. Here you come, they're playing house music, they're playing German pop, like whatever goes here. In Ghana, you have a more diverse scene where you have kids coming from America, coming from London, and traveling the world and being able to create something brand new. They're kind of, they're kind of just pioneering the sound right now. I think that's what Amare is really important because she's a, a catalyst for, for a new attitude in Ghana. I am Amare. I am a Afro-fusion artist from Ghana. So I think what stands out about Amare is that she's making her own lane. You know, she's doing Afro beats with some R&B and hip hop. And then she's also doing hip hop and R&B inspired by Africa. Fusing both of these worlds, she's doing it perfectly in my opinion. The internet has made communication seamless. So I think that's a huge part in why we were able to draw diasporans back. Like, I was living in Atlanta in the thick of Atlanta becoming the center of the hip hop movement. I became a DJ to play more like underground African music that people weren't hearing, but that was still great. When they started to hear the kind of music we're making, they're like, okay, so the music in Africa is cool now, the music in Ghana is cool now, the music in Lagos is cool now. Okay, I wonder what they have going on there. The kids, the youth, they're looking at Nigeria and Ghana as places to go just like they would go to Barcelona or go to Paris. That's an insane thought process. The music is the siren. The music is, you know, the, the big poster that all of a sudden everybody sees and looks up and says, I should check Africa out. Um, for sure, the music is the trigger. If you love the music, then you have to get into the history. And that's where you're gonna find out about everything. Cause it's gonna be connected to the history of the music of that place. It's gonna be connected to the politics, why this country exists. You get to dig a little deeper and that's gonna give you the, the culture of that person and that, that area. Sharifa showed us this shop and she told us how important it was for her, even as a Ghanaian, to, to reconnect, to learn more about the history of the music. And that was one of my highlights of my whole trip. Like, I just got photos. I probably had, took more photos of that, that record store than I did anywhere else in Africa, just because it looks so cool. That's, as when I was a young person, I dream about going places like that and learning about music and being in those shops and just digging for the history. One particular record stuck out. It was actually a really big, big, big song in Trinidad, and it was huge in Jamaica as well. Put it on my Instagram, like, yo, I got to let the world know that this record hit a shelf in a record store Calypso in Ghana. Was influenced by West Africans. So yeah, it's like all back and forth. Yeah, and back. Being in that record shop definitely brought me to the understanding of how music travels throughout the African diaspora and understanding the influences are quite circular. You know, we see influences going from Africa, going out into the world, how it got across the water and into the African diaspora is an amazing journey. I now knew that I was Ghanaian and I wanted to experience on some level what the people 
who are from where I'm from experienced as they journeyed over to Jamaica. So I knew I had to visit Cape Coast Castle. So, um, so this is the Cape Coast Castle. Uh, it was built by the British. What is this on his neck? Like, why, why does this have all these hooks in it? So these hooks are to prevent him from escaping. Because in an arc oh, form, so he wouldn't be able to get his so, neck through. Exactly, he wouldn't be able to get his neck through. So the dungeon was created to keep the slaves here and prepare them for shipment. They spent two weeks, 33 months, in the dungeons awaiting slave ships to arrive. They slept on a bare floor. The captives, they were made to lose feelings as human beings. The open spaces up here, that was a source of light and ventilation for the captives. So all these rooms we have in here, these rooms are sacred rooms where the souls and spirit of our ancestors are still in here. Mm. If you have good eyes, you can see them. If you have good ears, you can hear them talk. They are not here to harm us. They are only here for us to experience what they went through. There is a door of no return. Slave Africans who went through this door lost contact with Africa. They lost their names, they lost their identity whilst they went through this very door. It's a weird bag of emotions that I'm processing still. It's a weird bag of sensations that I'm still processing. Um, I don't know why an apology is what I felt was the only thing to say. But my entire walk to that castle, I just kept apologizing to uh, the ancestral goosebumps I was feeling. It's a much more... You know, you know, you know how when somebody broke into your house and you felt that... that feeling of, uh... What's the word I'm looking for? You know, when somebody breaks into your house and you feel, like, violated, it's like my insides are just... My, it's like inside of me that all the drawers are open and all the clothes are all over the floor and you know they dumped this over there and they dumped that over there and so I have to sort this out now. So it will take time for Jamaicans or whoever, or even Africans, to really understand the gravity of what has really happened to us as a people. Even if it's bad, you should still know where you are coming from to know where you are and where you want to go to. As an artist, you really need to know these histories because we see things from a very different perspective yeah. from everybody. It changes the narrative. What's good, guys? All I've been hearing the whole time I'm here is welcome home. And it makes me feel so good to hear that. Everywhere I go, welcome home. I'm sure millions of Africans that live in the diaspora have taken that DNA test for the exact same reason that I have, which is to at least get a starting point on the journey of finding out where your heritage, your lineage is from. Yeah, that's why I did mine. And I think that my desire to visit the Cape Coast is actually the catalyst to say, yo, we should actually just do a show there. We should actually make this a thing. This is a desire that I have as a person, but also that my band members support. Yeah, when you do a show in, in, in Africa, you don't know what you're gonna get into. So we were in Ghana one night, and um, we wanted to put together a rave there, so we did it. 
We did it at all costs possible. For us musicians, one day we're not going to be here anymore and there's a music that's going to live on. Because it's not just, you know, something that's physical, it's also spiritual. It's something that will touch your heart. So if it's something that we're able to connect with so many people worldwide, that means we have these people forever. I'll give it to all other artists from Ghana that are here tonight represent you. Worldwide, right? Worldwide, right? Worldwide, right? Worldwide, right? We got some surprises! You guys have to ride with me like this. I'm alright! And what you need, daddy, you know I could be your protector. At the core, all of their, the music that we're making is African, and it's inspired by our roots. Um, it's inspired by the stories that we've been told, the way that we understand um, and um, take in music. We're putting that back into new records. For me, like just being able to share the stage with them and being able to feel their vibe and understand what they're on as far as musicians was, it was awesome. It was, it was really, really awesome. It was just next level for me. I was on stage, you know, emceeing, and then these guys come out and I'm like, <laughs> I was like excited with them, you know? Every time they stepped out, it was another artist, and then midway, another artist, and I'm just like, man, this is crazy. Mr. Easy, like he was up there for a good 15, 20 minutes. Oh, he's just DJing. Um, is he going to sing a song? And then I go and I, I kind of, uh, I kind of do a little, uh... Hold on. Mr. Easy need to come sing this song, don't? And I know he's not going to be able Easy to say... Easy need to take off the headphone and come around here, man. I cannot do it. I cannot. I'm sorry. I cannot do it. I knew he was going to say yes. Yo, play by that song in the play. We are giving them wicked now. We are giving them wicked now. We are giving them wicked now. Yo, Walshie, I want to see you dance to this. It's a good thing that creatives are the uh, shining light of positivity. Having people of different religions, different creed, different color, all in the same space is beautiful. Speaking to any of the African artists, making music was just like somebody saying, do you want to come over for dinner? And I've never experienced nothing like that nowhere else. Anytime I hear a specific kind of music, I want to go and be in it, you know, wherever in the world it may be. What inspires us to, you know, what's what's unique about these places? And that's our that's our goal with Major Lazer is to build bridges. We got surprises, right? Hell yeah. Drop that sound there again for better. Drop it. Mama. Yeah. Oh, God. It's rough for the money about coming back. Go. We'll be into the coolest. We'll be into the coolest. Yeah, be up here to the coolest. What else? God. Huh? We'll be into the coolest. What else? Be into the coolest. Ba, 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 we need more conversations with music and less borders and less rules about music. And it's all about the beautiful chaos. Be able to travel um, and create music and collaborate. Uh, it's given me my, my life. sitting back as as fans of the music and just being part of the wave and um and trying to like let people understand the music
And if we can collaborate along the way, that's beautiful. Some life and spend some cash. No be we the kill, no be we the bomb, no be we the steal. Just want to live our life. America no give us visa. Why oh why why why? After them come to my country, till our people take our money and take our people, they no want to give us the opportunity to come to their country. And you know things like Nigeria men fuck their heart. They know like a way they enter. And if an African man enter, they go say na fraud, do fraud, but then they enter. Everybody do fraud. Chinese, they do fraud. Are we? I like. Chinese, they do fraud. Uh, European, they do fraud. Everybody, they do. Indian, they do fraud. But at the end of the day, they go say na us, they do a Why? Why? America. Give my people visa. <laughs> All we want to do is to chill out. Abraham, 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 Abraham. We just want to have fun. 